Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. How he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise, go your way, your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon theme is, and now, for some grace. We talked about mercy last week. Grace isn't the opposite to mercy. It's the other side of the same coin. They go together, they go hand in hand. It's the part that really explains what we have, what we've been given, what we truly possess from God that makes us better, that brings us close to Him, that sanctifies us as new children in Him to a new obedience, really. Taking a brief look at the first lesson it's kind of funny, they're wonderful words, but not that helpful. Have wisdom, have instruction, listen to me, it says. Well, what, what wisdom do you have to offer? What, what is this knowledge? <laughs> what do you want me to hear? It's more of an introduction, really, to our epistle lesson, which thankfully has lots of content in there, and we'll certainly get there in a minute. I want to start, though, with our gospel lesson, which has that wonderful image, it's not a parable, it really happened, the ten lepers come up to Jesus and he heals them all. We're certainly not going to talk about how there was one that was worthy above the rest, because Jesus heals them all. Right? It says way more about who Jesus is than the ten lepers and the one unique leper. Though it certainly does say something about him and his thankfulness and the response, the fruit, if you will, of his faith. As again, we'll really get into detail with in the epistle reading, where he comes back and he really praises God and comes before the feet of Jesus in praising God. Right? Again, there's the emphasis about him being the Samaritan. He's not better than the other nine. Jesus says, go away. Go to the priest. They have faith to go to the priest to follow Jesus' instruction. And they're all healed. They are all healed. But it's interesting. I want to start with the gospel reading because of this kind of, this law which is in there that, that hits our consciences. Who do we identify with? What does describe you and me more? The one who returns to Jesus to give thanks for his life, for all that he's been given. Really, that we see that we are spiritually healed. We're no longer spiritual lepers. That's why we come here. We want to do that. I thank God for each and every one of you just, who's just been given the wisdom again by God. It's a gift from God to see that. And you're here. And it's only too easy to then become one of the nine, the majority of people that don't come to church because they just 
prioritize something else eventually. We just forget what Jesus has done for us to heal us inside and out. The hope that he gives us that even this frail body will become perfect one day. How many of us are looking forward to that? The hip may be a perfect nine hole or 18 hole or whatever the endurance you'll have to do that, the health you'll have to just live the perfect life to do whatever you want to do. Let's get into the epistle reading now. What we're really listening for, what is God's wisdom? What is his instruction? Galatians 5, 22. The fruits of the Spirit are this, love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. What else does our epistle say in regard to this? He who belongs to Christ Jesus has crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. But again, that's not a law. That's something, again, the beginning, beginning of verse 22, that, that's the fruit of the Spirit. We know the Ten Commandments, and again, we will confess them today. And really, love, that sort of first fruit of the Spirit, does describe the Ten Commandments, but we're in a different context now. Love in this context is a fruit of the Spirit. But if you obey the Ten Commandments, what are you doing? Right? You're loving God and you're loving your neighbor as yourself. But in this context, it's not a law. Against such virtues, such fruits of the Spirit, nothing is demanded, nothing is commanded. These things flow freely from He who is affected by Christ and His sacrifice for you and for me. Lest we forget, of course, on that cross. Rising from the dead, attaching his new life to you and to me by virtue of his promise. Fruits of the Spirit are Christ's promise for his made children in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit again touch upon the waters of holy baptism. Sanctified, set apart from the world to be who you are in Christ. So of course love. We, we start with love. It's the first, it's the last greatest thing. God is described as love in one of John's letters. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life, eternal life, will be with God forever, with all who believe. We'll see each other again. Forever. Eternal love. Joy touches upon that concept of everlastingness because of hope as well. Because of what we have been given, because of what we see now and what will be even though we may be hurting, even though we're presently suffering, even though we're in pain because of this world, whatever it throws at us, this pandemic, COVID-19, whatever, we still have joy, the bigger picture and everything in times of sadness and happiness. Joy is present. Eternal joy. Because that message never leaves us. Peace. Why do we have peace? Not just an internal peace, but the war is over. Jesus has won the war. We're continually battling our sinful nature. Again, putting to the cross, sacrificing those passions, those desires that we have. Knowing Jesus went to the cross, we can put them to the cross too. This links right back to the last one. I'm going to jump there. Self-control. We don't do this enough as, as Lutheran Christians particularly. We want to say, Christ is everything, Christ is everything, so I can't be anything. Therefore, 
I may even perhaps fall into sin even easier, because I'm nothing. We, we don't give ourselves enough credit in Christ. Of course Christ must be there, but we have Christ. We have Christ. So in Christ, have self-control, for goodness sake. Stop sinning. When you see you have a habitual sin, you don't stop doing it because you are in Christ. You can have self-control. It is a fruit of the Spirit. I'm giving this to you as a performative word now. In Christ, be better. I'm not meaning to harp on you with the law. These things, against these things, there is no law. This is the fruit of the Spirit. Have self-control in Christ. You can do it. Yes, you can. That's not just a hope, a worldly hope. I, I hope you can do better. In Christ, this is His promise. This is His fruit. Because we have eternal peace. The war is won. Have patience, therefore. This is really the other word for hope, because hope wasn't in that list, if you notice. But these all went first. Love, joy, peace, and hope. Do they sound familiar? You kind of celebrate them. Every advent, every candle is one of them. Aren't they? Love, hope, joy, peace. Maybe if I put it that way, it'll start to ring a bell. So the four weeks of Advent. Then of course, we really get into new obedience. The first four really speak about sanctification. That's because we're in Christ. The last ones really get into, because we're in Christ, there is new obedience in Christ. We can be kind. We can be good. We can be good. Not like the good shepherd or the good Samaritan, but there is goodness. There is faithfulness. There is gentleness. Why? In Christ. You can be in control of yourself. Yes, these go in complete contrast with everything else, which is more than natural. I decided not to memorize this list, but it's just as vital in order anyway. Covetousness, sexual immorality, envy, maliciousness, jealousy, anger. I don't need to go through the whole list. That just, I'm already pounding my chest. It is me. But in Christ, I know by His promise, the fruit of the Spirit will be self-control. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. And if in summary, maybe take a deep breath of, I'm in Christ. As opposed to, and I've only seen this in movies, I've never re recommended but uh, to me personally, but, but and you hear it all the time. And maybe it could even be like a good parenting exercise. Or you, know, you tell your, your child if they're really angry or frustrated or too excited or their bounces off the walls. Okay, let's have a time out. Count to ten. Okay? Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What can I say? Ten. Do you feel any better? Yes. Okay, that could be helpful, especially for a child. Guess how long it takes to name the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there's no law. I think that was 10 seconds. How much greater, how much more useful would it be for you if you just kind of memorized that scripture verse? And if you can't, I'm in Christ. Essentially. I'm in Christ. And His promise, because you are faithful, is to produce these fruits of the Spirit in you. Because you believe, in other words, you trust in Him, right? Against such thing there's no law. Because I believe I'm putting to the cross my sinful nature. Because I believe. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Can you name them all now? Name them backwards. 
You have self-control. That means you can be gentle. You can be faithful. You can be good. You can be nice. You can be kind. Why? Because we are sanctified in Christ. He gives us hope that is endurance, that is patience, because we have his peace. He has won the war. What a joy to be whole. And of course it's lust because it's first. What's the greatest of these? Love. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. In the name of for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.